Looking for one stretch that can drastically improve your hip mobility in the squat and deadlift? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly that. Hi, I'm Vincent from Upright Health, where we help you move beyond your limitations so that you can live with confidence. Be sure to check out the description box below for helpful links to our do-it-yourself programs. So today I'm going to share with you the frog stretch. I'm going to show you how to do it, how to progress in it, common mistakes, and why it's relevant to improving your squat and deadlift. So the way that I coach the setup of the frog stretch is I'm going to have Mitch get onto his hands and knees. From there, I'm going to have Mitch get his shins to be parallel with each other. And I'm going to cue him to look behind him to make sure that his shins are parallel to each other because what you feel and what is actually happening in reality can be two very different things. Next, I'm gonna have Mitch check in with where his tailbone is. I'm gonna have Mitch stick his tailbone towards the ceiling, and then I'm gonna have Mitch tuck his tailbone just to feel the difference between the two. And after a few reps of going to both extremes, I'm gonna have Mitch find what is neutral. Once Mitch finds that neutral position, which is where the tailbone and the, low, the lowest part of the spine is flat. I'm gonna have Mitch sink his butt towards his heels while maintaining two key points. Number one, parallel shins, and two, that neutral lumbar spine. And at any point where Mitch starts to feel like he's either losing the parallel shins, like the ankles are coming in towards each other, or the tailbone is starting to tuck under. Mitch, can you show that real quick? He's gonna stop there. So th those are the two key points of this exercise. Number one, keep the shins parallel. Number two, keep the lowest part of the spine neutral, never tucking underneath. For this stretch, I recommend spending two to five minutes in it every time you do so. Now, ways to progress. The first thing I want my clients to be able to do is to be able to get to 90 degrees of hip flexion. Right? That means getting the tailbone to the lower back to be straight and making a 90 degree angle with the thigh bones there. Right? Because uh, if Mitch tucks his tailbone under, tuck it super hard, super hard, keep going, keep going, keep going. It, it can look like there's a 90 degree angle between his mid back and his thigh bones, but really if you look at the angle here between his lower back, the lowest part of his spine and his thigh bones, it's not actually at 90 degrees. So first way to progress, get that 90 degree angle between the lowest part of the spine, the lumbar spine and the thigh bones. And once you have that, the next way to progress is by getting the knees to spread apart far enough that the thighs are at 90 degrees to each other while maintaining parallel shins, right? It's important that the shins stay parallel there because if you keep your ankles in the same place, you can spread your knees wider and get that 90 degree angle between the thighs but it's not the same stretch anymore. So that's the second way to progress is getting the thighs to be 90 degrees to each other while maintaining parallel shins. And the next way to progress after that is just to keep getting your knees farther and farther apart until you're basically doing the middle splits with your knees bent. Something that you can play around with to work towards that or even to work towards any of the first two progressions is contracting your muscles at a point where, where they feel like they can't stretch any further. So let's say Mitch feels a stretch in his inner thighs right now. It's fairly intense, but he can, he can bear it. At this point, what he, what he can do to try to get those uh, stretching sensations to be less intense is he can try to crush the floor with his knees, right? Activate his adductors, squeeze his adductors, let's say at 30%, wrap it up to 50% and up to 100% intensity if, if, if he chooses to. 
for five, 10 counts. And after doing so, he can relax. And what he may find is that stretching sensation that he felt earlier, it may not be as intense. At that point, he can bring his knees out a little more. Maybe just one inch, two inches. It doesn't have to be extreme. He just needs to get to another point where he feels like his adductors are gonna gently tear apart again. And at that point, he can squeeze the ground again, contract his adductors, start with 30%, wrap up to 50, 60, 70, wherever for five to 10 counts. And then he can relax again, see if that intense stretching sensation in his inner thighs has gone away. If it has, then he can keep going further and further, but if not, he can just stay right there and get used to that position some more, playing with more isometric contractions. He can also do that with his glutes. So instead of crushing the floor with his knees, he can try to spread the floor apart with his knees. He can repeat all of those isometric contractions again with his glutes, spreading the floor, relaxing, spreading the floor, relaxing, see if, seeing if he can go any further. So those are some ways to progress in this stretch. So common mistakes, Number one, letting the ankles come in. This is trickier than it sounds because at the beginning, your shins might be parallel to each other, but at any point where you're, let's say you're contracting, you're crushing the floor, or you're sinking your hips back, and at any of those points, your ankles may start slipping inwards without you knowing it, so watch out for that. Number two, common mistake, letting the tailbone tuck under. Right, just like with the ankles, as you are moving about in this stretch, your tailbone may tuck under without you knowing it. So also, you gotta keep in mind where your tailbone is at all times. Make sure that it has not tucked under. Make sure that your low back, the lowest part of your spine right here from your tailbone up to your low back is remaining straight. And mistake number three, not letting the belly soften. It doesn't matter how lean you are, it doesn't matter how skinny you are, your belly should sag when you are breathing in and out during this stretch. It's important that you let this happen because if the belly doesn't soften, then you're still holding tension in your body. And if you're holding a lot of tension in your body, it's gonna be very hard to get those inner thigh muscles, to get those glute muscles to relax in this stretch. So one thing that I like to do to facilitate that is breathe in and out super, super loudly. Excellent, Mitch. And that's three common mistakes for this stretch. So how does this exercise relate to the squat and the deadlift? In short, it helps you achieve better positions in the squat and the deadlift. For example, at the bottom of a squat, what does your butt tend to do? It tends to want to tuck underneath of you. Just like in the frog stretch, it wants to do the same thing. So by feeling what muscles need to stretch and contract in order for your butt to not tuck underneath you in the frog stretch, you can start to do the same thing in your squat. And same goes for the deadlift, right? Even though the deadlift, your knees are not quite as bent, you still need your pelvis your, and your low back to articulate smoothly on your thigh bones, right? At the bottom of the deadlift, you need to resist the temptation to tuck your tailbone under, just like in the squat. So this stretch applies just as much to the deadlift as it does to the squat. And that is how this stretch can drastically improve your hip mobility in the squat and the deadlift. And that's the video. If you found it helpful, check out the description box below for links to our do-it-yourself programs, including an entire program devoted to improving your deadlift mechanics. And if you liked the video, please like the video, subscribe and share it with a friend. And as always, remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't. I do my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Probably better than just that. <laughs>
<laughs> what, I, what I mean, what I, what I mean, <laughs> what I mean by your knees bent. We're not gonna show that. <laughs> so I can look down at my notes again. 